Have you ever wanted to teach your dog scent detection? Well, in this week's episode, that's exactly what Deb and I are about to do. My name is Sydney Owens and this is Talking Dogs. And this week I'm featuring Devil. She's going to be helping me to teach you to find target odour around your house. I'm also catching you at Memphis to see how I'm progressing with him and this week's training tip. This segment is sponsored by Ellis Butcher of McLaren Vale. Drop in and see Ian and his friendly staff for quality fresh meats and condiments at shop number 18, lower level central shopping centre, McLaren Vale, South Australia. Or for more info, visit the following website. So the backstory on Devil is she's my partner's family dog. And when I met her earlier last year, I was not really impressed with her. She was pretty naughty and pretty spoilt, and they were having issues with her anyway, so they let me step in. And she's turned out to be a really great dog. I really enjoy having her around and training her a lot. I'm teaching her different things as skateboard, obedience, and so on. But because her trainability has been so good, I've chosen for this very exercise. So the first thing you're going to need are boxes. I like to use pizza boxes. They're nice, they're cheap. If you're in Australia, you can get these from Campbell's Cash and Carries is where I got these ones from, or a lot of pizza shops will sell them to you, obviously for a bit more of a cost. But make sure they're not used pizza boxes. I'm not trained the dog to find pizza. Okay, so second step is you'll need odour. Easiest thing to be able to do is get yourself some essential oil, not fragrant oil. I mean, if that's all you've got in the house at this point in time, that's fine. But I prefer to use essential oil as the odour is a lot more potent and therefore the actual oil in itself will last you longer. So, makeup pads are awesome for this one. They essentially carry no odour. But even still, when we apply our odour to the makeup pad, whatever odour the cotton will exhibit will be overpowered by the essential oil. So it, the odour of the cotton is not even a consideration at this point in time. Obviously using clean makeup pads, I know, point out painfully obvious, and just add enough odour to where the dog be able to smell it easily. Remember the dog's nose is going to be straight over the top of this, so you don't need to go crazy with odour. If you can smell it, your dog can. If it's too strong for you, it's definitely going to be too strong for your dog. So now that we have all that done, what we need next is a nice quiet area, nothing that's going to distract your dog at all. Okay, so what we're going to do next, we're going to pair that odour. Essentially we're using a food reward, you can use a ball reward, no problem at all. But for today's effort, we're using food. So what we're doing with the dog, we're going to create an emotional response, but also we're going to teach the dog that odour equals reward. So essentially what we're doing, like I said before, we're going to pair the odour. And this is the easiest way I've found to do it. So I've got clearly odour in box. I have dog and I have food. So I'm simply just going to place food in box next to odour. Because always remembering the dog's breathing in as it eats. So this is the perfect opportunity to be able to show the dog exactly what odour means. Now, if she keeps her nose in the box, I'm going to keep rewarding that. Remember, don't do too much of this. No more than two sessions a day. Especially if you've got a fairly untrained dog, the concentration span won't last long at all. So if you get a nice little moment there, end it. You can come back later on during the day or the next day. So as you can see, it's very easy to do and pretty much anyone can do it and do do it. But also making sure your dog gets a regular drink as this type of work does tend to dry them out quickly. I'm starting a group in classes in scent detection here in Adelaide. So if you'd like to get involved, all you need to do is go to my Facebook page and follow the video prompts from there. And now we're going to catch up with Memphis. Memphis sure is an enthusiastic boy and a typical example of the breed in itself. But keeping it fun, keeping it light, breaking it down so he can learn as quickly as possible, yet keeping the motivation high so it keeps that enthusiasm there. 
there's nothing this dog really can't do. Really enjoying spending time with him and training him and getting to know him as he's getting to know me. Keeping it light, keeping it fun, keeping it affectionate. It's all part of having a well-balanced and well-trained dog. Showing Memphis that deliveries can come from anywhere at any time. Don't recommend this for everyone. You'd probably prefer to want to have some handles on your tug toy. Because as you can see, that's getting really close to my hands. Even I'm a little nervous about doing this. But he's a nice clean biter and I do trust him. The guy who raised him taught him perfectly not to bite your hand. His scent work is going as expected. I am expecting very big things from this boy. He's a very nice dog indeed. As you can see, Memphis is coming along beautifully. He's a nice, calmer, relaxed animal than he was when I first got him. Really happy with his progression. Like, much more predictable and reliable. But like I said, each week we'll be catching up Memphis to see how I'm progressing. But now, it's time for this week's training tip. Today's training tip is sponsored by Bell Claren Pet Supplies, proudly servicing Southern Adelaide. For all your animal feed and health products, with optional delivery available, Remember to check out their Facebook page for regular updates and specials. So why is the clicker such a popular and powerful training tool? And it's all because the clicker meets the three criteria for any cure command to be successful. So first it needs to be pronounced, second it needs to be unique, and third it needs to be consistent. So in the industry we refer to this as a bridge or a marker, as this gives us a chance to be able to mark and celebrate the behaviour or event and therefore creating a bridge between action and reward. Introducing a clicker is a very simple and easy thing to do. A lot of people tend to simply just click and treat where I'll actually introduce my clicker from the moment I start training my dog. Well that's it for this week's show and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe down below. I will be back next week with more tips from Devil and catch up with Memphis and anything else I can think of. But until then, get out there and train that dog. Improve the quality of his life and yours. In this week's show we're featuring Devil. Now the backstory on Devil is that she's my partner's family dog. But when I first met Devil, she was pretty naughty and a real pain in the butt, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, no, cut. <laughs> oh, God, I hope I get this one uh, in action. Just do it. Action, come on. I'll get this right. I know I will. <laughs>